Hi there, this is Justin. In this video, I'm going to help you prepare for your business analyst interview. By far the most popular blog post I've written on my blog is this one titled 12 Business Analyst Interview Questions and How to Answer Them. And I thought it'd be a good idea to create this video and go through those questions and tell you how you should answer them. Now, in your interview, you might not get this specific question, but maybe a question that is in the same ballpark. So listen carefully to the high level requirements that these uh, questions have. And if you can kind of understand the motivation behind the question and give an answer which addresses that specific um, point, then you will do fine in your interview. So let's jump right in. The first question is, what do you think about our business product or website? So if the interviewer asks you something about their business or their product, um, their service, some aspect about the business, what should you do? Uh, how should you answer such a question? Well, first of all, think, what is the reasoning behind this question? Um, it might be to break the ice, you know, as, as kind of an opening. Hey, what do you, you know, what do you think about us? You know, uh, we know you're shopping around. What do you think? But the actual motivation, at least if I'm asking this question, is to test if the interviewee has actually done their homework. Have they visited the website? Have they read up about the company? Do they know how much money the company has raised? It's, you know, has it been growing? The word on the street about the company. You know, has has this interviewee, has the interviewee actually put in the effort and try to stand out? Like how much do they really want this job? So you want to be able to show the interviewer that yes, you've actually done your homework and give your honest opinion. You know, um, if you noticed issues, for example, on their website or something's broken or, you know, if you have an idea you think would be really good on how they can improve their product or their business, then make sure you use this opportunity to say it because it's going to immediately put you, you know, in a good position. Question number two, tell me about an interesting project you worked on from beginning to end. And this is, um, you know, a very, very good question to ask if you're an interviewer. And the reason these kind of questions are asked is to test if the interview, if the interviewee has actually been involved and been given the responsibility uh, of working on very complex and interesting projects. And if the interviewer, if the interviewee, excuse me, can't give um, very clear details, you know, in a logical way, then they're going to look very, very weak. And this is why a lot of interviewers use this type of question. For you as an interviewer, uh, interviewee, you will want to try and pick a project which you did work on from beginning to end one that you're really proud of, that you think you did a good job with, and actually give as much details as you can. Try to also do it in a way where you realize you talk, you know, you're talking to someone who wasn't part of that company. So you, you might not have as much context or any context actually. So try and do it in a way where you, you know, you're talking to a child or someone who might not be familiar. This question is also good for testing um, the interviewee's uh, communication capabilities. You know, are they able to communicate in a very clear and logical way? Um, because that's a big part of the job as a business analyst. So question number three, why are you, or did you leave your company? And this is kind of a, a tricky question. I know in some countries, this kind of question wouldn't be asked because it's just not proper. Um, but a lot of interviewers will want to know why you left your company, you know, maybe they noticed you were there for a while. And what was your main motivation for leaving? Um, this is going to help the hiring manager really understand, you know, what happened at the previous company that got you to leave so that in this in our company, it doesn't happen you know, in, in order to retain you as an employee for as long as possible. 
So, you know, here it's a bit tricky. Maybe you got fired for doing something you shouldn't have, you know, and admitting to that in the interview is probably not going to look good. So, you know, be careful of this question. Um, but if you can try to position it in a way where you're showing that you're ambitious, that you're looking for a new challenge, that things were stale at the previous company, or, you know, maybe you had a very bad manager and you were being held back. So these are all kind of legitimate um, answers to this question. Uh, question number four, do you have experience with tool X? Now, depending on the company, um, depending on the industry, there's going to possibly be tools that they use, which you've never even heard of. And you're going to be in this weird position where, you know, they're looking for someone to join their team that will be will need to use a specific tool um, or system. And if you're, especially if you're a junior analyst, you're not going to have, you know, you're not going to have the experience um, to confidently say, yes, I can work with, you know, in any tool that they bring up in an interview. Um, it's a, you know, even senior analysts haven't worked with every tool out there. So how do you handle this? Well, there's, I have kind of two, two tips for you. Number one, really make learning and gaining new skills a priority, you know, and, and don't rely on the company to tackle this. You know, it's on you to find, to prioritize learning um, so that when you do get that great opportunity to join a company and they are looking for someone with some experience with specific tools that you're more likely to be able to say, yes, I've used this tool or I've used a tool very similar to this. And, you know, I like to learn new things. That's another way to kind of address this is like, no, but I've worked with other tools similar to this in the past and other complex tools. And I'm a quick learner and I'm confident, you know, within a short period of time, I'll be able to master this tool. Um, so, I mean, that's really my main piece of advice is uh, continue to learn. And, you know, if you're in a company where you don't have the op opportunity to learn, you probably should leave the company because it's not only going to affect you from the, in the day to day where your motivation is going to be low, but it's going to hurt you later in your career where all of a sudden, you know, you've been four years in a company and you haven't learned anything. So um, that's how you can handle this this question. Question number five, would you like to be a team leader manager in the future? So this is, you know, pretty standard type of question. Um, you know, when I was interviewing analysts and growing my team, I wanted to understand who in the team, you know, had that kind of ambition and that drive uh, and, you know, the vision to become a leader, become a manager. Not everyone's like that. Some people just like to, you know, um, be a, be at the ground level and do their job and do it well. And they're not interested in taking on more responsibility than the role requires. And that's fine. Um, so there's not really a right or wrong answer to this. You just got to be honest. Uh, you know, stick to your guns. You know, the worst way to handle this is to leave the the interviewer in a position where he doesn't really know if this is what you're looking for. Um, the best answer for this would be something like, uh, yes, I'd love to lead my, my own team in the future, but for now I'm looking to, you know, um, do my job, help the team grow. Um, and, you know, maybe in the future when, if there's an opportunity, I'd be happy to consider it. And that way you, you're kind of showing maturity, you're showing that, yes, there is an opportunity for it, but for now, I'm not going to, you know, put pressure on you to make me a manager. That's another kind of aspect of this question. Instead, I'm just going to, you know, do my job. Question number six, assume you join the company tomorrow, which areas of the business or data silos would you check first if I asked you to find the one insight which could have the biggest impact on the business? It's a long question. And, you know, like I said, you might not get this very specific, you know, phrasing, but the goal of this question is to actually see if the interviewee has, 
you know, thought about the company and if they have the experience to understand before even joining the company, what are the drivers of that business? You know, hopefully, you know, you can differentiate between a B2B and a B2C company. You understand if it's a SaaS company or, you know, an e-commerce business. And you kind of, in your mind, you can kind of paint a picture of the types of topics that are being discussed in the company. Uh, obviously, if you're very junior, this is going to be much tougher. Um, but a very good idea is before you go into the interview, sit with a pen and paper and try your best to map out the, as much about the company from a business analyst perspective as you can. You know, try and understand has the company just raised funding? So now the chances are that they're going to invest that money to grow. Um, you know, go and see what kind of press there is about the company. Um, and, you know, do your research. And this way you can say, ah, okay, you know, this company just brought on, a, you know, an experienced VP of marketing. They just raised a lot of money. Um, so if I was joining the company, obviously the company is not focusing on growth. I'd want to better understand the data that's been collected around the marketing. Um, if it's a, you know, web-based company, you know, visit their website, have a look. Do they have Google Analytics on their website? Um, you know, just basic things like this. And you can then, you know, take 20 seconds off the questions asked, you know, think about it and then respond, um, you know, very clear, as clear as you can. Um, and show, show the interviewer that, yeah, look, if I join this company, I'd be very curious to check this thing and check that thing because of, the following reasons and then lay them out um, and honestly if you really have no idea um, then say so say you know just be honest say I looked at the website but unfortunately I've never worked with a company like yours before um, you know I'm here to you know I, I want to be able to help as much as I can and I'm sure a team, uh, you and your team can help me um, better understand this type of business. Um, truth is, you do want to say something, you don't want to completely be blank. So, you know, do your homework. Um, and just do your best. If the interviewer sees that you're trying, uh, and you have done your homework, you know, half of the battle is just showing that you made an effort, um, then you should be fine. Okay, question number seven, do you have any questions for me? So this I think is actually a very important, um, you know, question, and you should be prepared for this. Uh, and this, there's kind of two, two tips I give, I'll give you for this one. Number one, if you've done your homework, and you've visited the website, you've given it some thought, you are thinking as the CEO would about what are the kind of challenges happening in the business and so on then keep one or two in the back of your mind. And then if this question comes up, then you know, you can, you can actually ask the interviewer, and he'll be very impressed that you know, you, you have those questions. Um, you have questions for him. The second thing is, you know, just listen very, very carefully during the, the interview. You know, most interviewers are gonna start by sharing a whole bunch of information about the company. That's what I did in my interviews so that the candidate, the potential candidate, um, you know, has more information to go on before being bombarded with questions. So if you listen during the, you know, the beginning of the interview where all this information is being shared with you, then you naturally should have some questions. Um, if it's about the team, if it's about the tools, you know, um, who exactly will you be reporting to? If they're looking to hire you as a marketing, you know, analyst, then ask questions about the marketing team. I mean, it's not too difficult. And this is to show your curiosity and, you know, that, you, that you're serious. If you have no questions, it's not a good sign um, because you really should have a lot of questions um, if you really are interested in the job. Um, cool, question number eight. Design a dashboard that would contain only five widgets, but would be powerful enough to make major decisions on the future of the company. 
So you'll probably get all kinds of variants of this type of question where it's more of a, a technical, um, you know, business related um, test. Uh, I actually gave this type of question to all uh, all interviewees that, you know, I liked in the, in the beginning of the interview and towards the end of the interview, I'd give them this test. I'd give them 10, 15 minutes with a piece of paper and pen and ask them to actually design a dashboard. Um, that would contain, you know, the five KPIs for the for the business. So you might not get that, you know, exact test, but a variant of it. And once again, this is comes down to your preparation, um, your experience in understanding the drivers of this specific business, and also if you listened, you know, um, often the interviewer will, you know, if they're giving you enough information. Uh, or a lot of information during the interview, then they're going to mention what are the biggest challenges being faced by the company. Um, you know, what are they uh, focusing on right now? Their goals for the end of the year. And if he, if the interviewer hasn't covered those, then those should be some of the questions you ask. You know, when you know, in in question number seven that I covered before, when you know if they ask if you have any questions, you know, ask. You like what are, what are the goals of the company for this calendar year? You know, where, how will I fit into the goals of the, of the company for this year? Um, so this specific one where it's designing a dashboard, you know, this comes down to experience. This was a question I'd give to senior analysts. Um, so it will be a bit tougher for junior analysts. But once again, those five, you've got to be very um, clear with your selection of the five widgets that will be in your dashboard and make sure they cover the main drivers of the business. Um, for a SaaS business, it's going to be things like um, new versus uh, uh, re um, recurring uh, revenue, retention, um, sales, and so on. Okay, question number nine, where do you see yourself in the company in 12 to 24 months from now? Also a very standard question. Um, the purpose behind this question is to kind of get a sense of where you see yourself in the company um, is this you know do you want to be a manager within six months and you know a VP within 12 um, it's kind of a, a almost like an interrogation type question um, a lot of people unfortunately try to join a job you know with unrealistic goals in mind so as as a hiring manager you want to understand what's in the mind of the interviewee, um, you know, the, the potential candidate for the role. Also, it, it's, it's this kind of question also helps to feel out the, you know, what the candidate didn't have in their previous job. So, you know, maybe someone left their previous job because they weren't growing, they weren't learning new things. So when this question's asked, and if you're in that position, then be honest, you know, say, listen, you know, I, I'm going to set myself the following goals for the first 12 months. I want to learn, you know, SQ, I want to improve my SQL. I'd love to learn, you know, Google Data Studio. I hear you guys are using it. Um, improve my skills, you know, have some experience with product analytics, um, whatever it is, you know, tell the interviewer exactly what you hope to get out um, of the role. But also be realistic. Um, if you say a lot of things which are clearly going to be a stretch, it's going to put off the the interview the interviewer, and it's going to lower your chances of getting it. Question number ten: Describe your ideal workday. This is a uh, also pretty um, common type of question. I imagine that's asked in a lot of interviews. I used to ask this question because I wanted to really understand where the how the interviewee saw himself um you know for for the interview to imagine that he's now joined the company and what does he really want to be focusing on some analysts for example want to sit in the corner do you know crunch the numbers no one you know don't want to talk to anyone put in there nine hours and go home and you know my team was much more collaborative and dynamic and that wouldn't work for me so I wanted 
the analyst to really paint a picture for me of what their day looked like. And hopefully that day matched um, the type of day that one of my analysts would have. Um, uh, this is also a good question if you're an interviewer to see how serious the candidate really is. If the candidate is completely blanked and he can't describe, you know, what his day would look like, then, you know, maybe he's really not serious about the job. He's just trying to make a, a switch to a new type of role and really has no idea what it entails. And, you know, it means it's going to be much more of a risk for you as a hiring manager. Okay, question number 11. What's one practice in your previous company which was so positive you'd want to implement it at our company? So this is also a good question. Um, the goal of this question from the perspective of the interviewer is to see if this candidate can actually bring something, something to the table that, you know, you the team doesn't necessarily have so maybe this candidate you know maybe the candidate um implemented a really useful uh process in his previous role and you know it worked wonders for them and they can come now and uh, implement it at your company um and it's also aimed at understanding if the candidate was really involved or was just on the side and just following, you know, following the flow. Um, if the candidate can really name or explain something, um, you know, explain something very positive that happened at the previous company, then it's a bit, of, it indicates more, there's more likely of a chance that they were involved and helping the team move forward. Uh, as an interviewer, if, you know, a question like this comes up and there really wasn't anything positive at your previous company, then say that, you know, explain that, you know, unfortunately it was a very negative environment, explain the reasons behind that, you know, maybe you were understaffed and overworked, um, you know, that the manager was not a leader um, and, you know, the positive changes you would make would be, uh, to push back against that kind of behavior happening in the future. Okay, question number 12, which tools, skills would you like to learn while working here? This is also, you know, pretty standard question, um, not too sophisticated. This is just purely the interviewer wanting to know um, if the interviewee has certain, uh, has a list of certain things which are important to them. You know, if it's a good um, hiring manager, then he's already thinking long term in terms of supporting this candidate if they join the company. Um, and, you know, it's also aimed at, at determining if the candidate is ambitious and really wants to grow. You know, everyone, even the most senior analysts, have things to learn. The learning never ends. And if you ask this question and you really don't have a list at all, that's a red flag. Um, it basically means you're, you're happy where you are in terms of your skills and you're not looking to grow. And, you know, that's not good. Um, and an experienced hiring manager is going to pick up on that. So that's it, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm going to link to this blog post below so you can come through and read it. And if you enjoyed this video and have any questions, please comment below and subscribe. Thanks for watching.